hello everyone welcome back to our channel please don't forget to click the subscribe icon if you really enjoy our video tutorial in this video i will walk you through how to perform brush big and godfrey heteroscedacity test in interviews what is heteroscedacity heteroscedacity occur when the variability of the error time is not constant across all levels of the independent variables. In other words, heteroscedacity occurs when the variance of the error times, error time changes as the independent variable variables changes. We have different ways of testing for heteroscedacity in interviews. The first one is Bruch, the Gangovri test, followed by LV test followed by Glazer test, hash test, and white test. But in this video, uh, we are going to demonstrate, or I'm going to show you how to make use of the first one, which is Broch by Gangovri test. This particular test is used to detect heteroscedacity in a regression model, and it helps to avoid inefficient estimations as well as invalid statistical inferences. The question you may want to ask is, why do we need to perform this test? The first reason is that it is one of the key assumptions of the classical linear regression model. So the main reason is to check the assumption of the OLS. So when you make use of this particular technique, you will be able to say that, okay, this model is free from the problem of heteroscedacity or it is not free from it. Another point is that it is used, we, we perform this test to validate statistical tests. As you must have known that heteroscedacity can lead to incorrect estimates of the standard error. Of the regression coefficient and this affects the t-test as well as the f-test which are used to determine the statistical significance of the coefficient and when these two key tests or statistics are affected the conclusion will not be perfect in other words it will lead to incorrect conclusions so there is need to perform this test so that we can validate the word the statistical test another reason why we need to perform this test is that it helps to it enables our researchers to improve the model specification for instance when you detect uh, the problem of uh, heteroscedacity in your model then you'll be able to take corrective measures such as transforming the dependent variable or adding a modifying predictor or using a robust standard error and the third point on my list here is to enhance predictive accuracy. To enhance predictive accuracy. You see, when you perform this test and you notice that there is a problem with your model, then you take necessary measure to address it. And when you do so, you will improve the model specification and that will also improve the model predictive performance. The major points I want you to take home here is that when a problem is not, when a model is not homoscedastic, uh, homo there will be problem with the statistical test, the model specification, and also it will affect the predictive accuracy of the model. There are some other reasons which you can get online. Now let us look at the non-hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis, as well as the decision rule. The non-hypothesis for Bruch, Bag, and Govray is that the variance of the residuals is homogeneous and does not depend on the value of the independent variables. While the alternate hypothesis states that the variance of the residual is what? Heterogeneous. And when it is heterogeneous, that means there is a problem with it. And depends on the words on the value of the independent variable 
So the decision rule is straightforward. Reject the non hypothesis which states that the variance of the residual is homogeneous. If the probability value of the F statistics is less than 5% and concludes that the error variances are not what, are not equal. That is, they, they, they depend on the values of the independent variable. Otherwise, fail to reject the known hypothesis and conclude that the model is free from the problem of heteroscedasticity. Now let me show you how to perform this test in eViews. Here is my eViews and I have my work file. The dependent variable here is GDP. The independent variable is uh, inflation. Another independent variable that we have here is oil price. Then the last independent variable is uh, population. So in short, we have one dependent variable and three independent variables. To perform this uh, test in interviews, you must first estimate ordinary least square regression. So to do that, you select GDP, which is the dependent variable, followed by the first independent variable, here is inflation, followed by oil price and population. Population. Then you right click on the highlighted variables and open as equation. You open as equation. Once you open as equation, you don't need to change the setting. The method of analysis is least square. You can see this is the sample, the range from 2000 quarter one to 2003 quarter four. So next is to click this person. Okay. Once you click on OK, you have your OLS or least square regression results. And if you look at it very well, we have three independent variables, inflation, oil price, and population. Now, once you get these results, the next step is to click on view. Once you click on view, you move down to residual diagnostics. Once you get there, then you select heteroscedasticity test. Yeah. You can see that we have different ways of testing for this particular problem. But the first, the one we are going to use is the first one, which is brush big and govery. That particular one is selected. So you just click OK. Once you click on OK, you have your results. Please don't forget the decision rule. The decision rule states that reject the non hypothesis if the probability value, the probability value of the F statistics is less than 5% and concludes that the error variances are not equal. Otherwise, that is, if the probability value is greater than 5%, fail to reject the non hypothesis and conclude that the model is free from the problem of heteroscedasticity. Now let us go back to our results. If you look at it, we have our F statistics here and the probability of F statistics in front. Then the value of the probability is what? 0 0.0778, which is greater than 5%. If you are not sure, you can just take your calculator, type the number 0 0.0778, then multiply it by 100. 100. This is 7.78%, which is greater than what? 5%. So with this, you can concludes that this particular model is free from the problem of heteroscedasticity based on what? Based on the result of brush and govery In other words, the model is homoscedastic. It is free from what? From the problem of heteroscedasticity and it can be used for prediction 
with this we are certain that the OLS coefficient will be efficient. It's we are also certain that there won't be any issue with the T statistics as well as the F statistics which are used to determine the significance of the model. But if you estimate your model and you notice that there is a problem of heteroscedacity, there are different ways or measures that you can employ to correct it. One of such is to log all the variable. You can take the log of all the variable and see whether the, the issue will be addressed. For instance, if you check very well, you, can, you will notice that we use the level value of GDP inflation. Inflation is already in percentage, so you can log it, oil price and population. So you can take the log of GDP, oil price and population. When you take the log, you run your OLS, you check the, you perform the test, check the results, and I'm certain if the result is not even perfect, there will be an improvement. So with this, we have come to the end of this video. I'm pleading, begging again, please, if you are just seeing our video for the first time, or you are just coming across our channel for the first time, kindly click the subscribe button below to be part of this great community. Also, turn on your notification bell so that you can be informed when we release new videos on how to perform different statistical analysis in interviews in stata in how in pattern and other software